If you have your Bibles with you, would you turn to Revelation chapter 5? Revelation chapter 5 is uh, one of the sites that uh, John the Revelator had seen in the spirit, okay, and uh, basically just gives a pictural view of, you know, the throne room of God, the throne room of God. You got various other people in scripture who actually explain the same thing, uh, you know, in different points in time. And you will find that, you know, what Isaiah says, what Daniel says, you'll see, you'll see pretty much a common thing running through. Um, but in the midst of this, you know, the description of this throne room of God, uh, I'm just going to, you know, focus on just one thing. So, uh, but we will read from Revelation chapter 5 onwards, the, from the first verse, Revelation chapter 5, I'm going to read from verse 1. Then I saw a scroll in the right hand of the one who was sitting on the throne. This John is saying this, okay. There were writing, there was a writing on the inside and the outside of the scroll. And it was sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel who shouted with a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the scroll? the seal of the scroll, and open it. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll and read it. Fourth verse. Then I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read it. Fifth verse. But one of the 24 elders said to me, Stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb that looked as if it had been slaughtered, but it was, it was now standing between the throne and the four living beings among the 24 elders. He, he had seven horns the lamb okay he had seven horns and seven eyes which represented the sevenfold spirit of God that is sent out into every part of the earth seventh verse he stepped forward and he took the scroll from the right hand from the right hand and of the one sitting on the throne and then he took the scroll the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb each one had a harp and they held gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Okay. Um, you know, Revelation is, is basically, this is what John saw on the throne room. And there are many things that we cannot, you know, kind of get the full extent of, you know, put our understanding around it in, in, a, in a full extent. But there are things that you got to look out for here. A lot of this that is happening in the throne room of God, who is the king of kings, okay, is something extremely grand, very grand, okay. The, the things that is beyond our understanding happening right there. If you, would, if you would notice in the scriptures, you will find, you know, all the, all the people who describe the throne room of God, they will describe everything around the throne room of God, but will never describe the one who sits on the throne. Try reading that and, you know, even, even right there in Isaiah, you will see the same thing. You know, you will see it, they're talking descriptive about everything around the throne, but not the one on the throne because of the glory that comes out of the throne of God. But in the midst of all this that's happening, the eighth verse says this, and when he took the scroll, the 27, the, the 20, oh sorry, when he took the scroll, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each one had harp, and they had gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Look at this. Right, and, and I'm, I'm stopping there, but you know, maybe later you can continue reading once you go home. And you will see in this very, very, uh, you know, glorious description here, in the middle there is a, a line that says, these 24 elders, 
were holding golden bowls which had incense coming out of it and these were the prayer of the people of god think with me such a grand setting okay this is the this is the throne room of the king of kings okay there's no one to match his you know his majesty he's there angels surrounding and if you if you actually continue reading you will you will find that you know there are thousands and thousands of angels all over that place the you know the narrative continues but in that throne room you know there are these 24 elders who have golden bowls in their hands and in this golden bowls you know which is filled with incense there's something that's going out there and the bible says these are the prayers of the people of god think with me with all that is so so grand and beyond our understanding this throne room has a place for the prayer of the people of god what are these prayers i mean are these just those texted prayers that we pray you know our father who art in heaven you know are these are these the prayers that you cry and pray from within your heart the which even words cannot express many times the times when you feel god where is this prayer going god i'm praying for all these years i'm praying what's happening god are you even there i want you to know this your prayer gets this is the other side of your prayer it goes straight into the throne room of god who are you and me just ordinary people who who in one generation we come we are born one day we live for a few years and then we die who are we that this prayer that is voiced out from the person who is a believer of god you know this prayer can go up and land right there in those in those bowls that are there in the 24 elders hands and it's right there in the presence of god i always always i'm you know if there is a time when you you have some activity where you love to like you know call into a certain number out here in this world you know once the number of calls get jammed on that machine afterwards it's just an engaged sound that keeps coming right subscriber cannot be reached at the moment okay but this subscriber can never you know get out of he's got space for you he's got space for me in fact in the bible if you see from page 1 to the last page the close to 650 people whose prayers have been written down in the bible 650 isn't that amazing in fact that's why i love the scripture because from the first page till the last page the scripture is this grand narrative a narrative about a creator about a magnificent creator about a mighty creator and he in all that he created he made one creation after his own image and why does he make this creation out of his own image so that he could have a relationship with him and the bible starts off with this and since that page 1 you will see right through this creator and his creation in a relationship there were there were barriers a big barrier called sin that comes in and breaks the relationship but hey you know what god came back again and to bridge to bridge this divide to bridge this barrier that came in and 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 became a you know a barrier between the creator and the creation so that he could not you know have a relationship with them we could not have a relationship with them but thanks be to god he bridged it and guess what your relationship you back in a relationship with the creator your prayer your prayer 
even the ones unspoken, get straight to the presence of God. We don't, we don't pray as an activity. Yeah, there are some forms that we do have. But do you know on the other side of your prayer, there is a one who hears you. Never will you hear a not reachable, you know, voice coming out from there. He, you are his people. He is your God. I am his child. He is my God. In fact, the whole of scripture, if you go through the, you know, the, 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 one, the, the, the teaching that we do in the, uh, in the life groups, it, it, it totally talks about the Bible, completely talks about God and his people. God and his people. How God came in and, and then restored this people back to him. And right through scripture, you will see this, this you know, creator and the creation in exchange, just talking. Oh yeah, there were so many people unfaithful to him. But there was a remnant that still was talking with God. There was a remnant that was there still in connection with God. And now, are we still praying? Come on, people of God. Some expression, I mean, looks like I'm talking to people who don't have relations. Are we still praying? Your prayers are getting there. Know that. Know that. You are that remnant. I am part of that remnant. Prayers. Getting into the golden bowls of God's presence. That's why I titled today's message as, you know, Cups and Bowls. Okay, so cups and bowls. And here you see, you know, each one of those elders holding a golden bowl. But it's not about the golden bowl. It's about the prayers that goes into that golden bowl. And thank God, our God is a prayer hearing, prayer answering God. He fills us with the spirit of God. For what? He fills us in the spirit, with the spirit of God so that I could know the heart of God. And with knowing the heart of God, I can pray according to his will. The golden bowls still there. Your prayer, no matter how insignificant you may be, you're too precious for him. He's got a place for you right there. Millions of angels, no access. Your prayer, my prayer, right here. Isn't that beautiful? There, there are bowls. There are bowls. And, and, you know, if you, if you would look at the scripture, you will find this right through that uh, there are about 650 people, you know, different prayers in the Bible that has been, you know, kind of written here. Uh, so what, how does the Bible define prayer? Bible defines prayers in a lot of ways. I'm just going to touch on a few, you know, a few points right here. The, the, the Bible defines, I mean, the Bible defines prayer as, you know, by the verses that are there, uh, you can make a note of these verses, maybe read it when you get back home. You know, first is a lifting up of our soul to God. God comes and lives inside of you. And, and, and there is a, there is a, God gives you that privilege to lift up your souls to him in prayer, in prayer. What is prayer? A pouring out of our heart to God. Didn't I tell you we are the remnant of God? And, and the remnant is given the opportunity to pour out your heart to him. Not like sprinkles of prayer, not just bits and pieces of prayer, not just you know, two minutes prayer before we eat our food. You know, he's saying you can pour out your heart to God. That's the opportunity. I wish we knew how effective prayer is. In fact, it's in James that the Bible says, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You'll see even the fact that Jesus, when he was on earth, every morning, you know, some of us think, why should I even read the Bible every day? I, I, the, 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 real, the more real God gets to you, the more you'll pray. The more I get to know God, the more I will pray. Because 
I will know the privilege of knowing him. And the privilege of knowing him is that even now, he hears, he answers my prayer. That's prayer. Another one. What does the Bible say about prayer? It's a crying out to God. Crying out to God. In, in fact, one of the things that you will see when you, you know, read through the Psalms, you will find a lot of, you know, moaning and groaning that David does. Have you noticed that? You know, correctly on that, you know, when you open the Bible in the morning and to the, that day's text will be like David going, why Lord, why? How many of you have heard that? You know, you know, why Lord, why? And, and you know, you, you might not be very interested in that Psalm, but guess what? David, for what he went through, you know, he praised that. That's his crying out to God. In fact, in fact, David was one of the guys who, who really, really persevered, persevered. He was anointed king. He was anointed king. You know, uh, Samuel came and poured the oil and, 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 you know, said that this guy will be anointed the king of Israel. But did he become king the very next day? No. 14 years. 14 years. He's not spending those 14 years in some Israel kingship, uh, you know, management training school. No, 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 no. He's been hunted down like an animal. He doesn't make sense to his head. He kills Goliath. He wins a, wins a victory single-handed for the Israelites. But the king who is supposed to hand over is not handing over. 14 years. He's hunted down like an animal. There was one point he is going back at the same country that, you know, Goliath was from. He goes there and he was, he was, you know, people identified him and they went and told the king. So he had to act like a madman. How many of you read that story? You know, like a madman, you know, with saliva oozing from his mouth. Hello, this is the king. This is the king of Israel to be king. And do you think he went through it all alone? His prayers are recorded in your scripture. All those prayers, the one I told you when you open your scripture, you say, why Lord, why? Those are the, and all, most of the Psalms that we have in, in scripture comes out of a life experience of this man of God. When he didn't understand things, when things didn't go the way he wanted it to be. How many times have you seen yourself go through similar, you know, paths? But my question is, has their Psalms gone out of you? You know, do we, do we leave a legacy like David? Having this, such a tangible relationship with his God. He cries out to God. Okay, what's prayer again? From Revelation 5, 8, it tells me that prayer is like spiritual incense to God. Incense to God. It goes down from the, from the mouth of a person who, is, who thinks he's absolutely insignificant. But it goes to a significant supernatural God. And it goes like incense in his presence. Like I told you, another one. Prayer is coming before the throne of grace. Angels can't enter there. Angels can't enter there. Cherubims are worshipping all through time. Cherubims are worshipping. 24 elders, you know, falling down, laying their crowns down. Who's got a place there? There is a golden bowl. Every elder holds, which is, has the prayer of the people of God. Hallelujah. I wish you knew where your prayer was going. I wish you knew that. This is not a petition to the chief minister of your state. This is not a petition to the Dasildar. This is a straight pouring out of your heart to the throne room of God. No wonder the one who sits on the throne is a prayer hearing, prayer answering God. You know, I just want you to 
just reading through some of the you know terms that i picked up from you know various books and you know i just put it down here what is prayer as many of the you know people of god who write on prayer you get to see prayer is a communion and communication to god prayer is in fact the oil that kept the evangelistic engines of the first century christians running okay i mean it, this was not like our time now romans were out to get these guys and i'm i always wonder first century christians never prayed for protection have you noticed that none of these disciples and these guys who were in the first century who were who were part of that great commission and as they were going out to different places never prayed for protection they only prayed for boldness and where they bold man they were bold they were bold they were so bold you know today we are like oh no one should come lord protect me oh they are coming from the left they are coming from the right these guys knew who their god is if you would know who god is your prayers can be great and powerful the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much okay what, what more you know people say this that it's an effort of man to reach to god but more than effort it's a privilege of man to reach god privilege privilege greater than any job you would have greater than any projects that you get any internship that you have man this is a privilege and i wish you and i will get to understand that this privilege has not been given to everyone who there are people who his eyes are blinded and some of them all of us also because we don't pray we don't pray in fact as a preacher i want to tell you this very easy to preach about prayer very easy to preach about prayer but you know what the privilege is to pray to pray the good old song that says this what a friend we have in jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to god in prayer i want you to move to this uh, passage in scripture which is from nehemiah chapter 1 nehemiah chapter 1 uh, it talks about a cup bearer okay uh, just to give you a uh, you know a little bit of a context uh, israel you know god told israel as they delivered them out of egypt and then gave them his laws and 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 said this hey if you obey my laws i will bless you if you obey my laws you know the things that i will do for you you know will be just amazing to your mind but if you do not obey the laws of god as a as a nation your enemies will come and take over your kingdom okay this is this is the thing that god gave the israelites and sure enough they they did obey god they were blessed but there were there were times where they they were rebels they went and they worshiped the gods of the neighboring countries they 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 went with the women of the neighboring countries there were a whole lot of mess happening there and you will find that so many times the enemies of israelites came and you know took them under siege and 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 took them to their nation as you know proper prisoners and people in exile and god you know then they prayed out there prayed out there and then god brought them back like that they were two times they did that and the second time we are talking about a time when nehemiah is there serving in the courts of a foreign king okay persian king these guys were taken over by babylon king nebuchadnezzar took them over okay and they're all there in babylon suddenly babylon is conquered by persia and persian king and look at this guy hebrew he was a prisoner but today he is in the persian king's palace you know what's his position cup bearer the cup bearer is is extremely important for the king 
he tests the food before it's given to the king. One of the biggest ways by which kings used to be like, you know, ex- uh, taken over is through poison. They poison their food. So the cupbearer is someone who re- really, the king really trusts this guy. Now this is, he's a Hebrew guy. He's serving in a Persian king. And, and, and the best part is life is made. His life is made. Persia was almost ruling two-thirds of the world at that particular point in time. Look at the access he's got to the king. But now we go to a certain, you know, uh, the first chapter of Nehemiah. Just going to quickly read that for you. Nehemiah chapter 1. Okay. I just want you to go to uh, verse 2, verse 2. Hanani, okay, this is written by Nehemiah, so he's narrating something that's happening here. Hanani, one of my brothers, came to visit me, you know, at the uh, king's palace. Came to visit me and some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. They said to me, things are not going for those who returned to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The walls of Jerusalem have been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I moaned, fasted and what? Prayed to the God of heaven. You know what? Actually, a Bible scholars say, this guy prayed for five months. Five months. Now, think with me as I'm painting this picture for you. This guy is one of the most trusted guys for the king. Okay? But one day he gets to hear from Jerusalem, his brothers, they came and tell him, boss, the problem, Jerusalem walls are completely torn down. And in those days, if a city's walls are torn down, anybody, you're like a sitting duck there for your enemies. So someone comes and tells him this. And this guy, his life is made here. But you know what? He has this burden for that land. Now, if it was me, if I was Nehemiah, let's say my name was James Ayer, okay? I'm, I'm there in the prison, I mean, there in the palace. And someone comes and tells me, saying, hey, you know what? Our, our, our people are dying there. No wall built. You know how I'd handle it? I'll say, hey, cool. The king is there. I'll, I have absolute access to him. I serve his food. We can do that. But look at this guy. He goes every day to the king. But the first thing he hits to is the king of Kings. We are so much about fixing, right? Especially they say men are fixers. I mean, we want to do something. I mean, just fix it, leave. There are times God calls you. Why don't you ask me what my will is for you in that season? This guy, he's going every day, but guess what? He's fasting and praying. To the God of heaven. To the God of heaven. You know, some of the things that he prays for, just amazing. Look at, look at this. You know, uh, the fifth verse. Then I said, O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant from unfailing love with those who love and obey his commands. Listen to my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even our own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, decrees and regulations that God you gave us through your servant Moses. This guy exactly knows what has gone wrong. Why are, the, why are their walls down? Why are their cities stoned? Because of what? The sins of the ancestors. See, you know what? Prayer, in prayer, you, you, know, you, you will get to see the heart of God. You know, he's just not praying a blanket prayer saying that, oh God, I'm going to the king. You know, please help me. Give me grace in their eyes. 
look at how much he knows the heart of god to even narrate this issue that is there at hand by saying god we did this we messed it up lord we messed it up my ancestor messed up would you pardon us that's the cry of nehemiah's heart you know i i, I will not go further we don't have time but i just want you to know this when nehemiah goes to that king after this five months when god gives him you know clarity to go you'll see that in the second chapter in the second chapter the first verse says early the following spring in the month of nisan during the 20th year of king gasrus reign i was serving the king his wine i had never before appeared sad in his presence so the king asked me why are you looking so sad you don't look sick to me you must be deeply troubled wow the burden in nehemiah's heart out of which he is praying literally shows on this guy's face and the king is able to point out and ask boss you don't look like this normally something's gone wrong with you and 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 look at this it is not nehemiah who is initiating this who is initiating this come on the king the king is initiating it why the king because he's already gone to the king of kings that's the way you, you know your prayers can literally change the terrain of your life your prayers can completely dismantle everything that the enemy has done to you you know your prayers can literally bring god's will happening right here amongst you amongst us that's the that's the privilege of praying in fact i just want you to to the next slide you know to the next slide but why don't we pray why don't we pray you know would you say to me why don't i pray ask yourself come on you can say it with the inside the mask too why don't i pray you know what we keep prayer to that last minute you know before we go to bed after finishing everything that we need to do during the day and come back and get on to this pressure cooker stands you know the back up and the head down on the bed and then you know slightly if you know your your family is praying a little longer sleep off the privilege and look at how it's been abused in your life and mind why do i fail to pray because i really don't love god you know parents i i mean it's it's good you ask your kids to you know jomania 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 you know you, 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 don't you do that at home i want you to know this it's just not jomania it's tell them that there is a relationship that god wants to have with you and out of this relationship comes prayer if it's all about prayer the all that he will say is what comes on the assembly our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name give us and i'm not i'm not i'm not mocking that but i'm saying it's beyond that in this relationship imagine i go to my wife every single day and i just tell her my wife who art on earth you know i just repeat that same prayer is that a sign of relationship that i have with her here's the god who is saying say it i'm hearing i'm hearing it why don't i pray i fail to love god my heart idols i'm worshiping other things in my life i've give, given first importance to it prayer has almost come to the last spot lack of faith oh i don't so trust god you know this song ke sara sara whatever will be hello anybody this is a old time song this is a song ke sara sara whatever will be will be that's not the prayer of a of a believer prayerless worldliness is crept in worldliness is crept in 
Oh, you're the, this manager. You don't pray. You just do it, man. Lack of personal discipline. Lack of personal discipline. You know, I lack in prayer. I lack in prayer. Sometimes the importance we give to the, this unseen God is so little that we are literally controlled by the seen things around us. This morning, even as we close into the return of this King of Kings, I want to encourage you, would you start praying? Remember, there's a bowl. There's a bowl there. Does that bowl have your prayers coming in? Is your prayer coming out of your life experience? It ought to. In fact, for this, your prayer to be answered, he did everything possible. One was his body was broken for you. Another one, his blood was shed for you. Would you stand to your feet? You know, this relationship that God wanted to have with his people, the whole, whole of scriptures are about God and his people. God and his people. And it's, it's beautiful that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, the Bible tells me, he took bread, gave thanks to God, broke it and he said take eat for this is my body broken for you likewise after supper the bible says he took wine gave thanks to god and said drink this for this is the blood i shed for you for the forgiveness of sins Drink this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Something so beautiful about the God who gave himself for you. Nobody has the power to forgive sins in this world other than the one whom we are talking about. Today, I want you to know there is no sin available in the database of earth that heaven cannot forgive. All of us, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God has made us his people. And to thank him, and to thank him with all awe, shall we just take the bread and together partake of this. Let's have the bread together. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take the juice. Let's just say, thank you, Jesus. If not for you, no one would have done this for me. Thank you because he who knew no sin became sin for me. That I who knew no righteousness could become the righteousness of God. Let's drink of the juice together. Father, what a privilege you have given us that we should be called the children of God. As many as have received him, to them, he gave them the power, the right to be called children of God. Thank you that we have an everlasting Father. An everlasting Father. He's the perfect version of our imperfect fathers on earth. Thank you for Emmanuel. He dwells within us. And God, we want to ask you, Lord, sorry for treating you so casually. Sorry for two-minute prayers and one-minute prayers and God, ritualistic prayers. 
when all heaven was opened up oh god for these bolds and the people of god prayers coming out into it into the presence of you father we treated it very very casually we always meant it for someone else these are for the full time people but god thank you thank you thank you for the privilege to pray may we never belittle this as long as we live one day we will stand before that throne room lord and while we stand there we will see with our very own eyes these bolts that are there which were lifted up in your presence by which we insignificant people could talk to a significant king of kings thank you thank you god we ask this prayer in the matchless name of king jesus the king of kings All God saints said amen you may be seated